after we harvested our garlic, I had it sitting in a cool dry place to cure for a few weeks. And now as you can see, it's very dry and it is ready to, for me to go through, clean it up a little bit and get it ready to store long term. The first thing I'm gonna do is trim the neck of the garlic several inches long. Then if there's any large clumps of dirt, I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. And then with a pair of kitchen shears, I'm just going to trim the roots up because that's where a lot of the dirt stays. And I don't want that mess in our food storage area. These loose papery skins, I'll just peel them off as well so they don't fall off when I take them inside. Then what you can see here, it is dry, it is clean. The skins are still protecting the cloves inside and the roots are trimmed really short. This is gonna be really nice to get strung together and store. I'm going to do this with all of the garlic that I have here. I, I want to make sure that I don't take off too much of this papery covering because that is what protects the cloves while they're in storage. Just trim it up really nicely, brush any loose dirt off. And again, this looks really nice. Okay. Now here is an example of one that I accidentally got it with the shovel and it's split open. So this is not going to store well. What I'm gonna do, I'll still clean it up and take it inside, but instead of, it, instead of putting it down in our food storage area, I will take it right into the kitchen and just use it first. It looks like just one clove was damaged and the rest should still be us usable, no problem. So while I'm working through these, I thought I'd just talk to you a little bit about growing garlic. If you've never grown it before, it's really fun and easy to grow. I've been growing it for several years now this entire part of the garlic is a bulb or a head of garlic. When you, when you break it open, you can see there are individual cloves that make up each bulb or head. This variety is a, like I said, is a hard neck variety. So you can see that the cloves would grow around that neck. There's no cloves right in the middle. It's just the stem. A soft neck variety would have a lot of very small cloves instead of this hard stem. So you would get a few more cloves out of a soft neck variety, but I really love the taste of this music garlic. So garlic is something that you're actually going to plant before the first frost in the fall. And you want to, you don't want to plant it too early, but you do want to make sure that it has time to establish some roots before it goes dormant in the cold winter months. Then in the spring, when the temperatures warm up enough, it will start sprouting and come up completely on its own. Then it will be ready to harvest in early summer, depending on the variety. Now, normally I would have grown much more garlic than I did this year. However, the seed garlic that I saved from the year before, uh, it did not keep well. So I actually didn't have all that I wanted to plant for this year. But that I think that's gonna be a good thing because I am actually going to try some new varieties this year. The Music garlic, which is this, has an excellent flavor, but it does not always store well long-term. So I'm going to try a new hard neck variety and a soft neck variety to see if I can get a long term storage out of them. Especially with the hard neck, you can just use it first and then you don't have to worry about how long it's storing. Oh, here's another one that I hit with the shovel. So I am going to pop off the bad one and set it aside to take in the house. Now, one thing to know about garlic, because 
Whenever people talk about growing garlic, they always talk about curing it. If you're just wanting to eat garlic fresh, you do not have to cure it. You can go out and pull a head of garlic whenever you want to use one. So there's nothing quite like fresh garlic. However, when you're wanting to store it and expect it to last through the winter until your next garlic harvest, you do want to make sure that it's cured properly or the cloves will start going bad. So I trimmed all the stems off. Now I'm going to go through and just clean up any papers that look like they're about falling off or dirty and trim the roots on all of it. I would love to be doing this inside because we are having um, 100 degree weather. The heat index is around 110 today and I could not even guess what the humidity is, but it is through the roof. But as you can see, this is a messy project. So I tried to find a shady place where I could work on it and get it done as quick as I can. And it looks like this weather is here for a few days. Hopefully it will cool back off next week. What makes it so awesome to grow is you plant one clove, you get anywhere from five to eight. Some of them are gonna be smaller, but some are gonna be pretty good size. So it's a great return on your investment. Especially if you plant enough garlic, planning ahead knowing that you're gonna seed save some of these cloves. Then you're not purchasing new seed stock every year and it becomes a really great way to save money and get a much better quality product. you can see there's quite a bit of difference like here's a small head and here's one of the larger ones that I have so if I was going to seed save from this I would take from the bigger head and then I would go through and I can see this clove right here is bigger than the one next to it so I would take the biggest cloves from the biggest heads of garlic to save to plant okay I've got all of my garlic trimmed and cleaned up, so I'm gonna clean up my mess and then show you how I bundle them up for storage. I love watching other homesteaders on their YouTube channels and uh, following them on their blogs. And this is a tip I picked up from Shay Elliott at the Elliott Homestead. Uh, when I started growing this, I was a little bit disappointed that I couldn't braid it. And when I saw her do this, my mind was blown. I was so excited. Now, when I do this, I try to do them in bundles of four just to keep them all even. And honestly, that's about how much garlic I need in my kitchen at a time. I'll only bring up a small amount like this and the rest of it will stay down in our food storage area uh, where it's cooler than in the kitchen where we're cooking and a lot of humidity from canning and things like that. Okay, so I've got my string. I choose the cloves that I want to use. There, that one fits pretty nicely. And a lot of times these with a curved neck are perfect to go on top because they just slide right in there. So I put my string over and pull the ends through tightly. And then I just wrap those ends around and tie it. I tie it fairly tightly because if this continues to dry and lose moisture, these garlic bulbs could actually slip out of their bundle and I don't want to lose any. And I pull that end all the way through and leave a loop so that if I wanted to hang this up, I could. A lot of times what I'll do is just lay it in a basket or on a shelf and then I can just grab one bundle. The string I'm using to tie these bundles is just like a cotton butcher twine that you would use in the kitchen. So it's nothing special. I have a big spool of it and just cut off what I need.
And I like to have my loop on the back side if I can, um, just to make it easier. If I am hanging it up, it'll, it'll hang the right way. I like to make things look as nice as I can, but it is not important if they are twisted or sideways. The important thing is just getting the right amount that you want to use at a time bundled together. It just saves time down the road. Okay, now here is why I try to leave several inches of stem on. This one's too short to go in the back, so I have to rearrange and we'll put the tall one in the back and then give this guy a little more room there so I make sure and get them tied well around their necks. That works much better. Then I come around, tie it on the back side. I don't know how it came out perfectly that each bundle had four garlic bulbs in it, but I love that it did. We wound up getting 14 bundles of garlic uh, and then I had about a dozen more that weren't good for storage so I didn't bundle them up. So altogether we got close to 70 heads of garlic. Uh, that is a good amount but it's definitely not enough for us to use for an entire year plus seed for planting this fall. So this coming year my goal will definitely be closer to 100 uh, maybe even 150. So last year I planted garlic on Halloween, so it will definitely be somewhere around the end of October or November whenever I get it planted. In the meantime, this is what we have to use. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I would love to answer any questions you have, and I definitely encourage you to try growing garlic for yourself this year.